five years. Welcome back. Spring has been a long time coming this year. Finally, we're seeing flowers, robins, and the opening of Lagoon. The Farmington Amusement Park is now open again on weekends as one of the last family-owned parks in the country. Of course, our Craig Worth has old film and pictures of this Utah institution. It's worth watching. It has been a part of Utah summers since most of us were kids and since most of our parents were kids. It is Lagoon. And many of us may remember when they charged one price per carload. So you put about a dozen kids in the old Plymouth and you drove up those country roads in Davis County. You drove past nothing but open fields. And then there it was right at the corner of a farmer's field. Actually, it started on the shores of the Great Salt Lake. It was called Lake Park. The opening was a big deal that August night in 1886. An elegant pavilion and lots of trains to get you there. It was a stop on the Denver and Rio Grande Railroad. But Simon Bamberger bought it and he moved it three miles to Farmington, where he had his railroad. It was a good idea. The Deseret News says 6,000 showed up on Labor Day in 1901. The big thrill was the shoot the shoots. That's where one took a boat down a big slide and splash hit the lagoon. Of course, the carousel was popular. From its installation in 1906, it's the oldest attraction at the park. It has 45 characters and thousands of memories. Julie Freed grew up with Lagoon. She's the third generation to be the caretaker owners of the famed carousel. Hand carved, hand painted. This carousel is very, very special to Lagoon. It's on the National Registry. And actually, there was a fire at Lagoon in November of 1953 and it took 500 firefighters, all the firefighters of Davis County, to make sure that this carousel didn't burn down. Even still, there were a few charred treasures from that fire. Lagoon chugged along for years until World War II. As part of the war effort, it closed, and that's when the Freeds bought it and wondered, would Utah still want to show up? My grandfather, Peter Freed, and his brothers, after World War II, uh, were looking for something to do. And Lagoon, 40 acres at the time, had been closed during the war. So in 1946, on opening day, he sat at the front gate, and they were just wishing someone, anybody, would come. And he, he remembers counting on his fingers the people that came through the gate and 18 people came and they thought that was the greatest thing ever and they couldn't believe that people wanted to come. They did come back, back to scream on the roller coaster of 1921 vintage, back to the speedway and the boats. Indeed, it was a time to imagine you were on the lake or imagine you were in a speedboat. You went back to Lagoon and you were back to eat cotton candy. Of course, they came to be scared, and they were. And somehow you survived to do it all over. It's actually where Julie Freed started. Oh, I was a character. I was dressed up as a doll. And it was in a room that was full of stuffed animals, and I would just pop out, and I thought it was the funniest thing. Me, little me, being able to scare people. Lagoon beat the odds. It's one of the few family-owned regional parks left in America. The place with the big shoe. Yeah, my favorite. So in 1956, the Freeds thought, well, it'd be a great idea to put together a Mother Goose Land and the old Mother Hubbard shoe. And you know, today, it's all part of the history of Lagoon. Craigworth, ABC 4 News.